Hi, I'm Keith Bachman, Dan Falls CMS Trainer, and in today's video, we'll be discussing the details of both building and using local on-screen web graphics of the SM800A. So in a different video, we focused on web graphics. On this video, we'll be focused on local graphics, local meaning at the control. This does require a live connection to the control when I am building my web graphics or local graphics either. Um, you're gonna select the graphics editor and when you do, it's automatically gonna pull back all the data points. So as you can see up here, we uh, have a window open where it is pulling all the data points in for us. Now, just a little bit about the file structure. These local graphics are gonna be saved in a PNG uh, format. Um, so that's what we are required to use as PNG. And on these local graphics, we are allowed to have up to five of those. Now these local graphics will be required to be a specific size. So the size of the file becomes very important here. We'll be talking about that in a little bit. This PNG file that we now have just uh, discussed above will become a VZ2 format once it is into the graphics utility. Uh, so as we're building it, it uh, will take this PNG file and make it into a VZ2, and that's how the um, process uh, works inside the graphics editor. So these data points will be overlaid and displayed in real time. Uh, that means that if I have temperatures, pressures, I'll be able to see them in a real-time uh, setting. Once the, uh, the overlay is complete and the project is saved, these type of files, the VZ2 is the one we're talking about right uh, at this moment, uh, will be packaged into a DPJ. Now that DPJ indicates that it is a project file. So what it does is it takes the a VZ2 and all the data points we overlaid and mix them as one package and that package is uh, shown in a DPJ type of a file. So you will always have part of this package a DPJ file and then along with that will be this VZ2 for the locals. Now you could have both because uh, they, they when we're building this graphics we build the web and we build the local together. Uh, when you export the files, they uh, so when if we do want to take this file and we want to export it out of the control because that's where the files now exist inside the control inside the system manager, it will be um, extracted or exported in a zip format. Now that'll end up being in your download files, so that's where you can then take it and store it in a specific uh, location so you have it for future reference. Now the important part of uh, wanting to have your file available for future references the, to recognize or realize that these initial uh, formats, this PNG in particular that we're talking about here, is not part of this zip file. It, the PNG itself, does not get saved down to the control. That means you will have to keep a copy of it on, localized on your computer. Uh, if you wanted to get in and rearrange or relay out the, the actual drawing, you would need to have your PNG uh, and then um, the way that you'll have it available to you is if you keep it stored on your computer. So a real quick flow, we're talking local. So that means that local on the control, we're gonna have to use PNG. The PNG, when it is uh, into the graphics utility and its building process will become a VZ2. Here's the overlay data points that we're going to be overlaying. When we do that and we do a save, that means we'll have the VZ2 with the data points. These two combine, that's when it becomes a project file. And now this project file will get loaded to each of the controllers. If I have a host network with these four different controllers, each will receive um, it's particular or uh, it's specific, I should say, um, gra uh, package. And that way that localized graphics is residing in each of those controllers. If I start brand new, you can see that I could build a new one. I could open an existing one. So this is where I would uh, be able to look at how I, uh, the, the options available to me. 
uh, from the building perspective. This is the data points that are uh, in the, uh, have been pulled out of each of the controllers. Uh, up here, I can either do local, which is what we're focused on today, or I could do browse, uh, browser view, which would be a web type of graphics. And then here, if I do have local, I have possibly a host network of multiple units, and this would list them all out for me. Now, when I start building a brand new graphics, this will be the first screen that shows up. It's an introduction screen. All this information up here I've already discussed with you. The one area that's very important would be this line right here for graphics used in the system manager local screen. That's what we're talking about. We're focused on local here. The PNG files uh, will have to be dimensioned at 800 by 450 pixels, eight or 12 bits, no alpha channel. So there are multiple uh, web uh, locations where you could go and find an editor that will allow you to modify. Uh, you just need to do a search on that. I now have connected to the, uh, the the graphics editor. Once I'm connected to the unit, I get a pullback and I have all the data points sitting here and it's saying, okay, what are we going to edit? So we're gonna to go to the manage graphics. It's going to give me this option here and we're focused on local screen graphics. So I said I have one, two, up to five then I have to choose the file that I want to be using, which will have to be a PNG type of a file. Once I've selected that, I go to the save option, and it'll take me to a screen such as this, which uh, was a PNG uh, created and now loaded, uh, ready for editing purposes. So we're on the local, we are on unit number zero, we have all the data points here, and these each can be dragged and dropped onto the screen here in any format you so choose. It's as simple as dragging and dropping. Here you see that they have already, or this screen is already built. Um, so a lot of data points sitting on here. Uh, this you know, can be done by anybody in any format that they so choose. Once you've overlaid all your data points that you want, then you go to the save option. When you select save, these data points are automatically pushed to each of the controllers. And once the package is received, it will give you a pop-up saying uh, that it's successful and that it must reset the control. So at this point, the units uh, system managers out there will go through a reset. Uh, this screen is showing browser view, which be the web, but the purpose of this screen is to just so that there is a, a pop-up that gives you some flexibility with how your data points will look. And we'll go through this whenever we go uh, live, but just notice that it can be either small or, small or large font that you can display the, the point name or the unit name as well. Now that's all done with a left double click on the unit. Once I do that, it will change and then any subsequent ones that I pull and drag and drop over will be laid out in that same format. I want to export, which I highly recommend that you do. Then you're going to, once it's built, once it's been downloaded, once the control is reset, all is now operational, we will go through an export. When we do all local and all web graphics that are in this control will be exported. Um, and when they do, they're in a zip format. We discussed that a little bit ago. They'll be in a zip format and they'll be in your download folder. Then we have the option of import. Now, when we have an import, why would we use an import? Well, if I had uh, a controller that I replaced and I now loaded in the database, but the database and this uh, file, this graphics file, are not uh, together. They, they do not package together. So I first do the database followed by importing the graphics. So it's very important, as we just looked on the previous slide, that you export and you keep 
of the file saved. Uh, so if in the future we would have to possibly replace loading in the graphics. All right. So we're now live on a control. This is one that is my demo unit sitting next to me. I'm on a network. So this would be very similar to being uh, at a job site or calling into a control uh, from remote, either one. Um, we are now going to go into the graphics. So I'm going to go over to the menu and we're going to go to the graphics editor. As you can see, it was pulling into data points. Here all the data points sit. And we want to build a localized graphics, but because I am now into a control and it's saying, okay, let's go ahead and build this, I'm going to go to the manage the graphics. And you can see that there's nothing been selected. I'm actually going to put two local graphics into this control just to give you a perspective of more than one graphics. I'm going to choose the file. You will, prior to this, have your PNG file somewhere on your computer, right format, 800 by 450 dimensions, uh, as it required. And I can go to either one of these and say open. So now you can see I had the rack. Uh, one displayed here. I'm going to go and grab a second one. Now the only thing you'll see here will be PNGs. And now I have both of those selected. So I'm going to do a save and in doing so it populated that PNG and it now converted it to a VZ2 as we've been talking about all along. Now to uh, build, I'm going to go over and say, I want to go to the analog sensors, which would be temps, pressures, and those type of, uh, uh, of items. And here would be my discharge pressure. And it's as simple as dragging and dropping the discharge to here. Uh, and you want to center it into the option here. Now I'm going to, I'm going to, left click and I want to go to a larger font because I want it to be a little bit larger in there. So this is what I referenced about left clicking. And we got this charge now in a larger font. So now what I do following that will be the same. So as you see, when I drag this over, it's in that larger format. And how about drop leg? And I'm looking over here and I don't see it immediately. Uh, a very simple way for you to find things is to uh, quickly put it in a search. Here's the drop leg pressure. I bring it over and I put it into position. Now, any of these can be adjusted by using the arrows on my keypad, so or keyboard, I should say. And as you can see, I can adjust them uh, to center them in there. There's no grid on here, so there's no snapping to a grid. You can freelance them into position. So now when I go to these devices, I want to look at the U17, but you can see there are so many different uh, uh, variables in there. How could I streamline this? I would go up here to search and put in U17. And now you can see that all these case controllers are strictly showing me the U17 uh, thermostat controlled air, and that is what I want. So I would bring this over. And you can see that I have now just the uh, numeric value, but I do want more. So I'm going to left click again, and I'm going to say, well, give me the name and give me the units. So now you can see I got the name. And I can now just go right down the line and bring these over. And many a times it might be easier. I find it easier to just simply pull them over. And of course, you can see 3 1, 3 2, 3 3. Here's 4 1, uh, 4 2. And so you keep yourself organized. But now I find it easier to go and align them uh, in this fashion once they're over here. Again, everybody has their own way of doing it. Always remember that I can very quickly and easily use my arrows on my keyboard to, uh, to fine tune the alignment of these. Uh, I'm just doing these by hand, by my mouse. I just wanted to give you an, a, a good feel of how the process takes place. So this was the first drawing that we did, and I'm going to stop there with that one. I am going to go to the second drawing. 
and it is a store layout. As we can see, things are much tighter, much smaller uh, in format here. Um, but if I wanted to uh, possibly do the exact same thing here, um, let me just pull that out and make this go to devices and go here. And there's that U17. And again, I'm going to go up here and say U17. And if I wanted to start here with A31, and let's say it's these cases right along here, the normal procedure that we use would be this, but notice how big it is. Uh, I would never get everything to fit. I'm going to double left click. I'm going to go to the small format. I'm going to remove all these items. So now you can see that I can take this and I can just start placing them uh, next to it. And again, you might prefer to just bring them over first and followed by alignment second. What happens or how do I know which one is which? You can see when I hold over top, it shows me that it's 3-1. Now I can quickly align. I can use my uh, arrows on my keyboard and you can see how I can just ever so slightly move that one. So now I have those on there as well. So now I have, let's uh, just say that I've built a complete setup on both. Um, uh, the VZ2s, the both the pictures that we want so far, or both the graphics that we want. And because I am uh, happy with what I have, I'm going to do a save. With the save option, it now is being pushed to the control. You can see successful. Click to restart all of the, uh, click yes to restart all the controls. Now in this particular one, I only have a single control, but it is right now being reset. So this localized graphics does reside down there. Now, because it's localized graphics, I cannot see it from here. Uh, so at this point, we will have to go to the front of the control and there we will uh, be able to see the local graphics. So now that we've loaded the graphics utility into the controller and we are now at the controller, it has already loaded and reset and we've logged in so you do need to have your credentials to log in this will be your screen you can see across the top it says dashboard equipment graphics so on this screen we would go to the graphics screen and here is the graphics that we had just loaded you can see we have our points in down here we have circuits over here and we loaded two graphics so down in the bottom corner you can see one and two there would be number two, and here would be those temperatures that we've uh, overlaid on this graphics. So um, by building in the um, utility, the graphics, we loaded it down to this controller, and these points now sit here. So one last very important bit of information, the uh, data points that are on any given controller are the only points that you can make available in your graphics. When you're doing local graphics, you cannot bring data points from other controllers. You're strictly looking at the data points that exist in this controller. So here you can see we have on rack A, B, C, and D, uh, which would be, could be different controllers, but because we are looking at rack B, um, and this controller is Rec B, they would be the only points we can overlay. And that is how you load in local graphics. Thank you for watching our video. And for more documentation and videos on the system manager, please visit danfoss.com slash supermarket support.